You're welcome back to The Breakfast. And the conversation still is about banditry and the statements of the Zamfara state governor, Bello Metawale, for amnesty to be granted to bandits and that bandits, or not all bandits, are criminals. We now have a social commentator, Nuruddin Adigmiru, joining us. Good morning and thanks for being here. Good morning. All right, before, before I go into this, let's first get your, your position. Where do you stand on this matter about uh, Governor Metawale's statement that not all banditry, not all bandits are criminals and that they should be granted amnesty? Well, uh, Governor Melo Matawale is just being economical with the truth. If you look at the definition of that particular word, banditry, it means a group of people that is violent, that is ready to kill, that is ready to torture, and do all the illicit acts you can even think of. So from that word, banditry alone, that is nothing friendly about that word, and that word can never represent something new. So for me, it's just being economical with the truth. When we are talking about bandits, there is nothing can come from bandits. And you should know the act of banditry, nothing can come out of it. So to me, um, Governor Bilu Matawari is just economically the truth. And it has shown that that particular word is not even evidence to what is even happening across the country. Oh, Mr. Adebero, if you take a look at the news, we see that hundreds of people have been kidnapped. Lots of them have been killed by these bandits. They are taking up arms and are doing things that are illegal, violent, inhumane, you know, and that are basically infringing on the rights of other people to life and all of that. Now, Bill Metawale is saying that they should be granted amnesty. Do you agree with him? Uh one thing there is, is, you know, all these uh, governors, by the time they sit down in the comfort of their um, room or com comfort of their office that has been paid by the public, then they feel they are on top of the world. One thing that is so germane is this. What is there in giving bandits? What is there in giving them amnesty? Do they know the meaning of amnesty? So it's like just giving a killer. It's like just giving a kidnapper. Just giving... Those that uh, kills hundreds of Nigerian, uh, a, a kind of relief. It is not. Uh, it is not sustainable. It is unacceptable. In fact, it is belittling the sensibility of Nigerians if amnesty is being shown out to them. We are talking about those people that have made some sudden um, children to be orphaned. We are talking about a, a kind of people that have killed fathers, mothers, that have killed farmers, that have killed a lot of people, and you still want those people to live and enjoy the goodies of this particular country in the name of amnesty. Then, if such is being happened in Nigeria and federal government is sitting down looking at it, then we are not serious in this country. We don't know what we want. We know that the lot of money they want to shun out to their cronies in the name of giving amnesty to, to these bandits because labor can never change the scheme. They will always be bandits. Look at what happened in Castina. Nothing has changed. And you know what the Kasna government always say later, that giving amnesty to bandits will never solve the heart of banditry in the, in the state. So the same thing so applicable what, so to exactly? uh, Matawali. If he okay. thinks he wants to go out 200 million, 300 million to all these bandits, in the name of giving them uh, amnesty, it will not solve any problem. You so what, Mr. Nuruddin, so what exactly, Mr. Nuruddin, what exactly would solve uh, this issue of banditry head on once and for all? Because from what you're saying, from all indications, uh, you're saying that um, the government or the governor does not really have the body language, not giving the right body language as in uh, solving this issue of banditry once and for all. If he is saying that not all bandits are criminals, invariably he's trying to justify why some of those people should not really face the law. Uh, well, to me, I think the, um, the federal government, because the federal government controls security, they need to really harp on our security. They need to really invest much on security. We need more personnel. The security operatives in Nigeria cannot man Nigeria. Cannot. Look at the issue of the police. There are some certain things that are the work of police to turn into the, to the work of the military. So we need more officers. We need more brains. We need more ammunition. Let me tell you one thing. If you look at what happened in the what happened in the Kangara, we do know that in Rafi local government and Shiro local government of Niger State, 
They were being attacked every day. It's just that it's not being reported. Every day they are being reported. So they, for the fact that they attack, because it's a school in Kangara, that is why we are saying we need much more of military. How many officers do we have? With those ones that have been killed, those ones that have been uh, injured. Even look at the uh, uh, police officers. They are not up to 500,000 in Nigeria. How can they man? A, a, a country of over 200 million. So we need more integration and the body language of the government should be more. It's not about just having people, having service ships. That is not. Service ships will never go to the battleground to go and fight. We need more officers that are dedicated and their welfare should be well taken care of. We have good surgeons, but the problem there is that management of their talents, management of their weapons, is major the problem. The better way to stop bad entry is that we need more officers that are hungry to kill crime, that are hungry to face the war, that are well motivated and well welfared to the extent that they can put their life on ground for the country. Without doing that, giving uh, amnesty to banditry, it's just like you are calling arm robber and you say you want to give arm robber money so that you could not rob. By the time you finish spending the money, you go back to the crime. So that's the thing. Nigerian government needs to show that kind of responsibility of making sure we have good officers, dedicated, good welfare for them, and good tactical approach. And if we need help, let us call for help from, uh, from other countries. If okay. we need help, we should call for help because it's very, very uh, now. Now they move from Niger State. They are now in some part of the Kuala State. So in that case, the North Central are not even safe, talk less of the Southwest. So what is important here is this. Federal government need to move, invest more and make sure the money spent is well valued and well monitored. Okay, Mr. Adigmiru, thank you very much for your time on the breakfast this morning. We appreciate the points you've given. Thank you. Oh, Justin Akadoni. Mm. It has wow. been one, one, uh, like a stormy uh, issue when it comes to uh, banditry in Nigeria because uh, I don't know how, why would have. Uh, the police, we have all different um, departments in the police. Mm -hmm. We have uh, riot police. We have um, special police force uh, units and everything. At the end of the day, this issue of um, young boys uh, taking up to arms and everything cannot really be resolved. Once and for all. It just tells a whole lot that uh, we are not ready to tackle the issue of security in I Nigeria. Mean, and, and take a look at the budget of the Zamfara State Government, yeah. December 2020. They <laughs> earmarked 200 million naira. <laughs> For, for repentance, repentance band. bandits. How do you know they're repentant in the first place? Or maybe they come and pray. Oh, my God. Yeah. I just... Uh, there's just so much to say here. Well, I feel this money could be better channeled into, you know, social mm -hmm. investment programs yes. rather than given to bandits. Mm -hmm. Because like, like Mr. Adibmero just mentioned, when the money is exhausted, do yeah. you think they would Don't relax? ask for more like Oliver Twist. Oh, my God. We're still talking about security, and this time the service chiefs are in focus after this break on The Breakfast.